Zoology students, welcome back to the Zoology video lecture series. Um, today we're going to look at Arthropod Lesson 2, which we're going to start talking about the chelicerates. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the chelicerates, there are roughly 60,000 named species. They include everything from the horseshoe crab, sea spiders, the true spiders, ticks, and mites. So the horseshoe crab is actually not um, a member of the crustaceans. It does not, is not related to the crabs and lobsters, even though its name has crab in it. Uh, it is actually classified with the spiders, ticks, and mites. The chelicerae seize, pierce, or tear the prey that are partially digested externally before being consumed as a liquid. So uh, their way of eating is that whatever, whatever it is that they are getting ready to eat, they have to digest it outside of their body or at least partially digest it outside of their body first. Uh, they don't have mouth parts, so they can't chew anything. So once the prey species, whatever it is they're eating, has been dissolved outside of their body, then they can draw that liquid up either with their, uh, their chelicerae or they can just simply then uh, suck it up with their mouth. But that is how they eat. So here's a horseshoe crab. Um, everybody is familiar with this. If you haven't seen one at the beach, uh, you've seen some, I'm sure, at the gift shops and whatnot. Uh, again, they are not related to the uh, crabs and lobsters. They are more closely related to spiders, ticks, mites, and scorpions. So speaking of scorpion, uh, there is a scorpion. We can see the appendages end in two points. Being biramius, you can see right there they have the chelicerae. And of course, the scorpion has the very well-known stinger. And then, of course, everybody's favorite, the spiders. Uh, this is one of the species of tarantula. Um, not sure if this is the rusty need tarantula. Probably not. Uh, but this is the spider. You can see the chelicerae are on the spider. They are right here on this guy. All right. Now, let me go back. All right, so the chelicerae So the chelicerae on the spider are right here. You can see them there. And then of course we have these are my favorite spiders, the jumping spiders. Um you can see their chelicerae right here, and jumping spiders have, same as all spiders, they have eight eyes, but the jumping spiders, because, you know, they have their name, they jump, uh, they have two very large eyes up front, gives them binocular vision and allows them to judge the distance that they are getting ready to jump, whether or not they can make it or not. Um, so, and they're, they're really cool little spiders. Great jumpers, you know, as their name would suggest. The chelicerates feeding is often aided by a pair of appendages called the pediopalps. Let's go back. So this on a jumping spider is the pediopalp right there. Then uh, they are near the mouth. The antennae are lacking, so they don't have antennae the way your insects do. They have four pair of walking legs. So uh, four pair means they have eight total. Their body alignment is they have a head and a thorax fused into a body segment called the cephalothorax, okay? We're going to learn here uh, in the not-too-distant future that insects have three body segments. Spiders only have the two. They have the cephalothorax, and then the rear body segment is called the abdomen. Arachnids were one of the first to become adapted to life on land. There are about 30,000 known species of spiders, most of them are on the smaller side, anywhere from 2 to 10 millimeters long, uh, X, which is not very big. 
excluding the legs, so the body, their, their body portion, not counting their legs and how far they spread out, just their body, is about 2 to, tw to 10 millimeters long. Some female tarantulas, though, are pretty big. They can get up to uh, about 90 millimeters or 9 centimeters. Okay, so that's pretty sizable. Males are almost always smaller than females, and we see this in a lot of different kinds of animals, um, primarily in your egg layers. So a lot of reptiles, snakes, for example, the females are always much larger um, because a larger female can carry more eggs, and more eggs uh, gives you a better a chance that your offspring will make it and it'll help you pass your genes on to the next generation. The chelicerate's body is divided into, as I said earlier, a cephalothorax and an abdomen with four pairs of walking legs. Each chelicerate has a fang used for protection or defense, also used in predation in the spiders. They extend and inject venom of various neurotoxins, which means they affect the nervous system. Protein digesting enzymes, or basically acids that break down uh, the bonds between the proteins in their prey and pain inducing anamines, which means uh, they hurt when that is injected. And if any of you have ever had a spider bite, you, you can attest um, they do sting. Some of the chelicerates will manipulate their food with their chelicerate or suck up this semi liquid fluid inside their prey. The scorpions. <laughs> Uh, there's a little 80s metal humor for you right there. I'm the Scorpions there. I'm the rock band in the 80s there out of, out of Germany. But anyway, the real Scorpions, the ones that uh, we're going to talk about, they, this is their body plan. They have the pediapalps, which are the pinchers. The cephalothorax of the scorpion goes from right here. This is their head and body segment. So that means all of their legs are going to be attached to that side of the cephalothorax. Now, the scorpions are a little different. They're, they have the abdomen and the pre... The, so their abdomen has two. They have the pre-abdomen, which contains their organs, and then the post-abdomen is unique among the scorpions because that's their tail. And then, of course, the tail at the end has the telson, and that is where their stinger is. So uh, different from the spiders, they, uh, they have that abdomen specialized to deliver that sting. They are found in order Scorpnoidea, usually found in the tropics, subtropics, and the deserts. They stay underground in burrows during the day and prey on spiders and insects at night. So if you are, uh, if you've got a thing for spiders, then uh, you would want scorpions around because they're going to eat on the spiders. They dismember their prey with their chelicerate and digest it externally. It's it stings with its tail to inject the venom. So different from the spiders, the spiders will inject the venom with their fangs in their chelicerae. The scorpion injects its venom with the uh, post-abdomen, the stinger on the back of their post-abdomen. Their stinger swings down from over the scorpion's head with deadly accuracy. Uh, so basically, whenever they pinch something, their stinger is going to drop right in f in between their pinchers. So whenever they grab anything with their, those two pinchers up front, whatever's in between them, that's where the stinger is going to land. And their venom contains neurotoxins, which means it will shut down the nervous system of their prey. Most scorpions will inject only enough venom to cause pain and swelling in humans, but there are a few species that can be fatal unless treated with antibodies to the neurotoxin. And the golden rule, from what I have understood about scorpions, is the big scorpions are, yeah, they're, they're scary and intimidating because of their size, but the, really the ones you need to watch out for uh, are the small ones. They seem to have the most toxic venom. This takes us to the ticks and the mites. These are parasites. Not insects. A lot of people think that ticks and mites are insects, but they are not. You can clearly see they have one, two, three, 
four pair of walking legs, whereas insects only have the three pair. So these are definitely uh, in the Chelicerata uh, grouping and not with Insecta. Okay, and of course, all ticks are parasites. This is a, a wonderful scanning electron view of a of a mite. It's probably a dust mite uh, called dust mites because they eat dust. And of course, 90% of all the dust in your home is dead human skin cells, and that's what they're after. And they are really, really small. We have mites that live on our bodies. The skin mites, they're eating the dead skin cells that haven't sloughed off yet. And they are so small that, as you can tell, you need a scanning electron microscope to see them. You can't feel them, but they are there. They are very, very small. Uh, ticks and mites are in the order Acnarina. They're different from other arachnids because they have lost all external signs of segmentation and have a projecting mouth region. So instead of fangs, their mouth, uh, basically called the capitulum, uh, is, is a piercing mouth part. It just kind of uh, allows them to tap in through your skin so that they can suck your blood, which of course uh, is what ticks do. There are about 30,000 known species and have been described, but it is believed that there are many other species that have not been classified yet. Uh, and as I said earlier, that all ticks are parasitic. And since mites are microscopic, you can't see them. That makes them pretty hard to find, um, which is probably why there are a bunch out there that have not been classified yet, which is why they believe that. And then, of course, ticks by nature are secretive. They don't want you to know that they are there because it, that way, if you know they're there, then you'll stop them from biting you. So they're very secretive and and sneaky as they get on you and they quietly sneak up your body and, and find a good spot uh, to painlessly uh, pierce your skin and start sucking your blood. They feed on blood of reptiles, birds, and mammals. So they're equal opportunity parasites. Uh, they're going to parasitize just about anybody. Mites parasitize various tissues of terrestrial vertebrates, which are your land-based vertebrates. Others prey on invertebrates or feed on plants. And then, of course, there are the mites that I was just talking about that eat dust and dead skin cells. Uh, this is going to be a good stopping point for us here with ticks and mites. All right, so that is going to be the end of lesson two. So hopefully we know the drill by now. Uh, you want to get on out of here and head on over to Schoology and take your exit slip for lesson two okay so thanks for logging in and watching and we will talk to you later